So, Sean, what did you think of the segment with Kurt Angle and Bray Wyatt? Because anytime, anytime I, I see Bray Wyatt in a segment that goes nowhere now, I always think of you right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought the same thing I always do. It's like, it's a bunch of gibberish. I eventually zone out because none of it means anything. Uh, you know, he's going on too about Orton still. You know, he'll Orton be trapped. He'll be trapped in the horse's horrors forever. Uh, no, he actually made it out of horse. Yeah, he left. He almost beat you. Yeah. He, <laughs> That's what, that's what I said before. Like, you didn't do anything to even, like, metaphorically have him psychologically trapped. All you did was drop a fridge on him, and then you talk Mumbo Jumbo the next night. Yeah, and then he, he does the whole gibberish, and then, you know, this is you could talk to Kurt Angle, this is your show, but it's my world. And that was and it. That was the end of the segment. Side, so. We went to commercial. Um, yeah. So, that, well, the night ended off with the triple threat match. Samoa Joe interfered and put a stop to Seth Rollins, and then Bray Wyatt interfered and put a stop to Finn Balor, so Miz became the number one contender. And that was right. rock. So we're gonna we're gonna definitely get the uh, the demonic Bray Wyatt versus the demon Finn Balor at next pay per view, which is you know fine in concept. I, I think it's an obvious thing you have to do, which is not a bad thing. But um, Balor definitely can't lose this match. Oh no! His first back match as the demon. There's no way. And <laughs> in in a typical four year long Bray Wyatt has to win. Bray, this match. Bray has to win. Isn't that every Bray every Bray match we get to where it's like, oh well, the other guy can't lose, oh, but Bray can't lose this either, and it's like we're fucked. Well, yeah, yeah but but now was. we're past the point of, of Bray is ever going to win again, so we don't just don't care anymore. Fuck Bray, fuck Bray. I'm fucking done. I don't really give a rat's ass. Remember a year ago? On paper. Remember a year ago when Bray turned face and the crowd was super into it, and they just pulled the plug on that. Well, yeah, he got he, hurt. He got hurt and he came right back as a heel. Yeah, but like what? Uh, stupid. With him I, I just, Reigns. just, I, I look. They, they, WWE posted something about the, uh, the show, like the finish to the fucking House of Horrors, or whatever it is, and just to get a consensus on what people feel about Bray. Like I, uh, oh no, it was, the, it was the promo, for Kurt Angle. They, they posted that on their Facebook, and I looked through the comments. Every single fucking person. I don't care about Bray. All Bray does is lose. Bray is meaningless. This is mumbo jumbo. This is bullshit. This is just everything, completely negative, everything. Don't care about Bray anymore. He means nothing to me. He has a credibility. Just every which way you could say that in varying degrees. I mean, just picture The Undertaker in, like, the mid-90s. If he just lost every match, and, pe- and people would just, that was it. It would just kill, it would kill the whole character. The mystique of, of the whole rest in peace and buried alive. It would just be like, whatever, he loses. Who cares? What if, like, all, like, this creepy, like, uh, uh, what do you call that? He had, like, the funeral parlor and, like, the segments with like Warrior and fucking Jake and things like that, and it's just like, like, what if none of those guys ever like put over his creepiness? If they were just like, ah, oh, whatever, well, just stupid. Yeah, that too. That wouldn't help. You're not, you're, you're not really dead. I don't, whatever. I'm doing. Fuck. Yeah. Like, everybody put him over like he was this fucking scary thing, so we believed it. Do you remember when it's he ripped when Undertaker ripped the cross off Hogan's neck? Fucking and, amazing. And like. St- Stared at it like with, that was so like that was dark. That's some dark shit. I love that. <laughs> to be showing to fucking That's kids though in the early nineties, like think about like that was back in WWF. Like the target audience was young children. Ah, yeah, I was so hyped for Survivor Series ninety one. That was pretty I was crazy. so fucking turned for that shit. And I I think that because I remember the first one I watched live was Mania nine, but I remember like I couldn't stay up for Survivor Series ninety one for mm-hmm. whatever reason. And because it was, it was on Thanksgiving, right? Uh, Thanksgiving Eve, I believe. Yeah, whatever it was, and uh, I, I, my mom taped it for me, and I watched the next day. I was so hyped for that match; I was so ready. And then when Hogan lost, I fucking cried. I was like, "This is not fair, fucking Ric Flair! It's, his neck is he hurt. His neck is fucked up." I was very upset. <laughs> it wasn't fair. Hogan should have won. It was awesome. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. 